Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. As you know, we've done a few shows on affordable housing, and so I'm now joined by Adam Smith, who is the president of, uh, of um, Bell Camp Modular Housing. Is that correct? That is, yes. And uh, he uh, is in the modular um, business uh, for lots of different buildings, but uh, believes that modular might be one of the solutions for affordable housing. Adam, how are you? Welcome to our show. I'm good. Thank you very much. Tell me a little bit about uh, your company, if you could, and, uh, and, and the role that you see at playing in uh, affordable housing and modular housing. Yes, so Belcamp Modular, uh, we're, we're not an old company. We've been around about five years now. Um, as we, when the company originally started and to this date, uh, we do a lot of um, single family homes, uh, townhomes, um, and we're starting to get involved in some affordable housing projects that, um, that are proven very cost effective, um, a very cost effective way to uh, solve a problem. Why? Because it's manufactured in your building? So yes, it's manufactured inside. We don't it, we don't have weather delays. Um, it's in a very controlled environment. Uh, there's no short, labor shortages or anything like that. Um, it's. I interviewed uh, someone else who uh, who told me that they thought that one of the biggest. Uh, benefits was a dramatic reduction in waste. And they were saying that on-site construction can have a 30% waste factor. Does that make any sense? Uh, that does make sense, yes. Um, with the factory-built home or factory-built building, we have a lot more drawing staff at our disposal. Uh, at our disposal. So everything, waste is a big part of uh, managing the build so everything's uh, cut to length and um, yeah a lot less waste involved in the build. And what are you building out of? Uh, I interviewed someone else that's building out of uh, con old containers. Do you uh, so, use any used uh, material? So we don't use old containers. Um, we, we actually build our own steel frame. The reason for that is with uh, shipping containers, there is um, health risks involved uh, because you don't necessarily know what's been in the container and what's been shipped in the container. It's hard to get records. So we actually build our own steel frame, which is a very, it's a very cost-effective way of creating the structure within a, within a building. And it's very easy to stack the buildings. Uh, we. We stack them up to uh, six stories high. Um, we're actually so even though you're not using a container, what is it similar to using a container? Is your steel box so, container size? So when you basically when you build out of a shipping container, a shipping container is very strong until you add things like windows and things like and openings in the corrugation of the container. It's the corrugation of the container that um, has the strength in it. So as soon as you make openings in that corrugation, you have to build a steel frame inside the container to support the container. So what we do is we cut out the container part of it and we just build out a steel frame. It gives us a lot more flexibility in different sizes of buildings. Uh, different ceiling heights. It allows us to create cavities for mechanical and electrical components within the building. And so you're, uh, you're building these containers and then what goes on the inside? Do you put uh, all the finishings and the furniture in the, in, the, in the container before you ship it or between in the, the steel structure before you ship it? Yes, so the steel structure is completely finished. In between the steel, we fill that in with um, wood studs or with um, metal studs, depending on the building type and what the uh, building code requires. And then it's exactly like a normal house, uh, drywall, flooring, paint, trim, 
kitchen, the kitchens in, in the factory. Uh, so there's very little site work involved. What about the roof? The roof is put on in the factory. You put on the roof in the factory? Yes, absolutely. So because we build out of a steel frame, we can actually create a separate steel frame that is a roof section. And we actually build that in the factory and ship it and it goes on top and bolts onto the top of the building. Everything's fully complete with our system. And um, what we like to do is we like to create um, living space in the roofs as, as well because we don't like to ship like empty roof space. So we, we like to create loft areas or live in a living space in the attic space. Awesome. Whereabouts are you located, sir? Uh, we're in Ingersoll, Ontario. Just and you've been in operation for about five years? Yep, five years. And what kind of volume do you have? So the custom homes, we build about four a month, depending on the home. Um, we do all, si all sizes of buildings. So sometimes we have a 400, um, 400 square foot house or a 4,000 square foot house. So depending on the size of building, depends on our capacity. Chatting tonight with Adam Smith, the president of Bell Camp Modular Housing. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back more with Adam in just a minute. Stay with us. Well, welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour, Second 960. Well, that was an interesting intro in regards to, you know, using containers uh, for affordable housing. Uh, we've now been joined by another gentleman from the same firm. His name is Sonny Fong, and he's the, uh, uh, what'd you say, the, the, the chief designer, the chief creative officer, Sonny? Is that your title? That sounds great, actually. <laughs> the chief creative creative officer so uh, tell us uh, just a little bit about uh, your background before we get into the detail if you could how long have you been with the firm and uh, and and what's your sort of uh, design uh, background if you could uh, i actually studied at the ontario college of art and design um uh majored in photography dabbled in design uh, i've always been a creative person so uh design and the arts have been a passion of mine for a long time Awesome. Over, and what over, got you into using containers for housing? Well, it's funny. Like I, I know Adam from, you know, uh, just through some friends and I was doing interior design, he was doing construction and we just kind of uh, collided and started to flip houses together. And he called me one day and he said, Hey, I like your work and I'm thinking about doing modular housing. And I said, Oh, he said, do you want to be a part of it? And I said, Sounds great. Let's do it. Um, I was actually um, doing some furniture design at the time and doing some renovations. Um, but my background is actually in social work. So um, there is a connection there because affordable housing is one of my passions. Yeah, no, it's it's a ma major issue. It was the number one issue in the uh, last Vancouver municipal election and probably number two or three in, uh, in you know, in Toronto. Um, and I think, you know, with COVID-19 and a lot of people... Um, you know, with rent issues and mm -hmm. uh, and mortgage issues and job issues, and frankly, um, living in uh, in in condominiums downtown that might be too small or or too congested. Uh, a lot of people are moving to the suburbs and and not able to afford uh, single family homes, and so therefore, some sort of modular, more affordable housing might be a solution. And uh, and you know, it's incredible. I've I've interviewed some people in regards to uh, homelessness, and uh, and and in Vancouver, they did a major study where they just gave people enough money to, to get a uh, very small but starter apartment. And, uh, and it costs less than it does to keep them on the street. Because Absolutely. when they're on the street, the number of times they visit the hospital or they call 911 or someone calls 911 for them and, and, and you know, the other costs. So I think affordable housing for, uh, for people in so many regards um, makes sense. Uh, student housing, um, affordable housing for, for homelessness people, as well as, you know, housing for uh for everyone mm -hmm. absolutely um from when i was doing outreach work and advocacy for um marginalized communities uh one of the depart i didn't work in this department but i was very inspired by the work they did i worked for a, um, an organization called st stephen's community house uh, which is based in kensington market um and we have a we had a branch uh, up at um st clair and bathurst and 
part of that was actually, and this was 15 years ago, was was not calling them shelters and not calling them, um, you know, like places for homeless people. It was really a self-sufficient kind of apartment style living situation uh, for, for uh, people involved with the street. And it was great. Like you would teach them how to pay rent. You would teach them how to, um, you know, cook their own meals, use a spatula, wash their hair, like all the basics that we take for granted in everyday life. And um, there were a lot of success stories uh, coming out of that department. And um, that's, that's always stayed with me um, just because uh, homelessness is, I don't, I don't like to call it a problem. I like to call it an issue and um, whatever we can do to actually uh, get people off the street and transition them into affordable housing is fantastic. And one of the first things we've learned um, when we do community work is that uh, people need shelter. That's like the main thing. And without that, you can't get a job, you can't uh, do interviews and put in a resume because you can't get an address, right, uh, to them. Um, so shelter is key, absolutely. So tell us uh, what you've done, how you've tried to solve this problem. You're, you're using containers. Um, these are um, containers that you're, you're not buying used containers like other people do. What you're doing is you're constructing um, structures in a, in a factory comparable to containers. Um, but you're yeah. putting in doors and windows and whatnot. And then what else yeah. do you do? And, and, and while we're doing this, I understand you might be able to show us some stuff. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we actually do containers. We do refurbished containers. Um, we're just finding that it's not as affordable as people think. Um, people think, oh, you know what? We can grab a container on Amazon. But the one issue with that is that containers that are used for shipping aren't safe. Um, for human um, habitation, particularly with the insides. They're um, uh, sprayed with insecticides. Uh, you know, they could potentially be a hot box or, or a freezer. Um, so when we use containers, we are certified by the Canadian uh, Standards Association. So we build everything to code. So our containers are actually um, spray it down. We have to use a certain quality of container. So we can't just buy a container off of a, you know, someone who has it on a, a, a piece of farmland. Um, we put insulation into it. We put subflooring. We put um, everything you need that you would want in a home. Um, so we actually do use containers. We just don't find that it's as affordable as people think. Okay. So what we've done is we've moved on to a more modular um, custom build where we're actually framing a house in steel and, um, and we'll still build to code, sometimes beyond code. Um, so there are four seasons. Um, the, material, the materials we use are quite uh, high quality. And um, we were like the first one we built, we were in there in January uh, during a blizzard. And I, I was in a t-shirt and, you know, uh, the door was open and we were fine. So I was quite surprised at how tight um, and functional these units are. And so I guess some of the benefits of this are that you're, um, you're building them in a factory uh, and, uh, and building yeah. all of the, uh, the, uh, the substructure, the, the insulation, the floors, uh, and then I presume the, the finishes on the inside all in a factory and, and, and there's some advantages to factory construction of the modular unit than there is by building on site. Is that correct? Absolutely. I've done renovations and interior design for a long time. And um, what we're finding with modular housing is that the benefits are their speed, affordability um, and functionality. So when we build in the factory, um, a lot of people think, oh, factory homes, it's going to be a trailer, you know, cardboard walls. But Belcamp Modular is a company that doesn't do that. We're certified. So we have to build beyond code. Our quality has to meet a certain standard by the uh, third party inspectors. So what we do is we actually just build our conventional home in the factory in different modules and we actually ship it to 
the plot of land that you have and we attach it and hook up all the services. So um, I tell people that it's, it's, it's really interesting to see because once you're on site and you watch the modules come in, it actually kind of looks like you're building like a dollhouse. Like it's different sections that you kind of are craning in. It's almost like Lego, um, but probably, you know, a million times more durable. And I can actually show you a few things. Um, I can actually show you a few pictures of the process. Awesome. What about the roof? Like, does it come in modular too? Yeah, actually it would come in, uh, if it's a flat roof, we would just, it would just be included in the shipment. But if anybody wants to do like, let's say 15 foot high ceilings, they want to do a pitch roof, a shed roof. Uh, yeah, we would ship that separately. Um, we just use a plain old flatbed truck and um, sometimes some police escorts. And, you know, we're not the, we're not the favorite person on the highway sometimes because we're taking up so much room, uh, but um, it's quite swift, uh, easy. And I've had some friends build custom homes in Toronto and, you know, it could take them over a year. Yeah. Yeah. But ours, we can install in a week. You can install a pre-built modular home on site Absolutely. in one week. Absolutely. If we have the foundation prepared. Yeah. If we have the foundation prepared, if we have uh, everyone coordinated and we do all that, we facilitate all the, you know, services and, um, it could be minimum a week. Yeah. Especially if it's, let's say you want a big rectangle and a lot of people are going that route because it's modern. Um, yeah. We, we crane it in, we put it down on, you know, connect the foundation, set up electricity, get some water going in there and it's ready. Um, what's really great about our product is we also have our kitchens and our lighting and our bathrooms all set up. So that's why, I refer to the dollhouse because it really does look like you're kind of just connecting different sections. Really? Of so it, when it comes, yeah. it doesn't come with what I described of the insulations and the walls and the finishings. It comes with more. It comes with the washroom, the it. kitchen. Flooring, washroom, kitchens, toilets, uh, appliances. We actually provide that as well. And you put the appliances uh, we, in, in the factory, ship yep. it with the appliances and then yeah. hook it all up and away Absolutely. you go. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, so you have one big giant square. It's made up of, let's say, five rectangles, five modules, what we call them. Yeah, we just put them down and we connect them all and you're ready to go. Fantastic. Can you show us? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, this so, sounds uh, kind, kind of fascinating. So I'd have to share a screen, I assume. Yep, I've done that. Can you actually see the screen right now or no? No, I can't, but it's coming up now. Okay, great. Yep. So what we're seeing here is uh, the crane bringing in a couple of the units. Yeah, so this is a property in um, Gravenhurst. Um, they're a lovely couple. They wanted something that was unique. So what we did was we created three modules, one on each side, one in the center. And they have a huge, where the crane is right now, with the, um, we have a huge courtyard uh, for them to do some landscaping, have a deck. Uh, I'm don't remember the width of that, but I believe it's something like 80 feet long, I want to say. Um, in fact, it's, oh, probably, it's probably too big. <laughs> I had the them. impression that uh, I guess these containers were primarily steel with just a few holes. You've got one whole wall here of glass. Absolutely. So one of the things we pride ourselves on uh, are the views. And so, um, you know, you can do traditional, you could do tiny windows if you want, uh, but we tend to sort of push, hey, you know what, you got a great view, you got some beautiful forestry, let's, you know, enjoy your coffee in the living room and have a, have a beautiful view of um, your, your trees. Now those, you said like, that the foundation views. had to be there ahead of time. What is the foundation here? You don't have a basement, do you? No, there's no basement in this one. In fact, our, we find that people are not actually more interested in basements anymore. I'm not sure why. Um, probably because we can customize the space to whatever uh, size you want. So I can potentially design it so that you have storage, you know, accessible on your uh, one story unit. Um, right. Yeah, the, so there's no basement. Um, so we use something called a helical pile or piers. Um, and 
um, in layman's terms, it's, you know, I'm not too familiar with it because I don't do the foundation, but it's basically a giant screw that screws into the ground and it, which is attached to the house. And really? so, yeah, so it's a new, uh, relatively new kind of foundation. You know, people don't know about it too much. Uh, it's very affordable. It's super, super strong. It's actually more environmentally friendly because it actually um, has a very low impact on the soil and, the uh, um, you know, the, where it's going in. And it can go through granite. So it's, it's just, you know, this is what we suggest. Okay, so you've got the foundation. You put in these three containers. Can you show us the inside or anything? Yeah. Um, you know what? I probably can't show you the inside because there are some privacy issues in terms of right. their home. But uh, actually, on that picture, you can sort of see what's happening Completely there. glass on both sides. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So th through the courtyard and through the back. And uh, you can sort of see the kitchens here. And we have a giant living room that spans probably, you know, 30 feet. Uh, there's a fireplace as well. Yeah. So this is, these are uh, pictures of just us building on site. Um, yeah, that's their property there. They don't have a lakefront, but they have some beautiful forestry uh, surrounding it. Yeah. So we just crane, it, crane that in and put it right in. And it takes a big team to install it on site yeah because yeah. of the cranes and yeah. um and then is this going to end up with a flat roof or are you going to put a, a regular roof on top of it yeah it is a flat roof actually um we'll do um we've already finished it but there's a membrane on top um which is water resistant and uh, again it's a kind of a new kind of product uh there's a slight slope so you don't have to worry about um rain uh, rain and stuff like that. Um, you know, some of our units um, where it's a really interesting fact is that they can take multiple times the snow load uh, of the Canadian standard. So you can have these in the Arctic, um, earthquake proof, hurricane proof. Yeah. So the, the steel, I presume, is a lot stronger than the typical wood frame uh, building. Absolutely. In fact, I will actually show you um another property uh where you can sort of see the steel framing happening yep uh so this is a smaller unit it's still quite wide but you know not as big as the one from gravenhurst so we start with a steel frame and um we actually still do some wood framing inside a lot of people like to hang pictures um you know wall cabinets and things like that so it actually still has wood in it so it's sort of reinforcing the steel um so you're getting a lot of structure a lot of durability happening in these units yeah we we don't we don't chintz on that so with with the steel and the wood how does this become affordable is it just that you're building it in the factory yep that's part of it um i don't know it's a good question i think we're very competitive and one of the reasons is because we want to offer a product. Um, you know, we just take pride in our work and, you know, we all have to make a living, but we just, we don't want to gouge the public in some right. sense. And can you build these uh, two stories. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we can build them to however high you'd like. Um, in can fact, you show us anything that's uh, more than one story? Yeah. Um, actually, I can show you this. This is a proposal we did. We, we were looking into doing a, a, a condominium in Toronto. Actually. And so what we're seeing here right now is a building that is one, two, three, four, five, six stories high. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. you've got six stories all built out of containers and uh, all the rooms in the condominium are containers. Um, yeah. Separate modules. A, separate modules. Do you have a central core that you have to build on site with elevators and things like that? Because I presume yeah. that can't be done. In a Absolutely. Um, actually, no, we um, we can customize it to whatever you know the project, whatever the the developer wants. Um, so this one's made out of multiple modules, obviously, but um, with the actual uh, elevators, yeah, I think the elevators are on the in the center. I think we're doing a central central atrium type, you know, kind of style, and then. Um, that's where probably a lot of utilities and things like that and stairwell. What, what do the, uh, the condo rooms look like? Can you show me that? I 
don't actually have a layout of that actually. Okay. Not yet. It's still in the preliminary stages. Um, and but it certainly looks versatile. There's no question. Oh yeah, like we we don't just do like you know a containers like eight or nine feet. We don't do that. Like we can double. We can any size. So I I'm gonna guess. I think they're probably around sixteen wide, each one. Well, I see these containers on ships that are you know stacked eight to ten high. So I presume that there's a fair amount of structural ability to stack yeah. them up. Absolutely. There's there's a I think there's a maximum of, of nine, but don't quote me on that uh, for stacking. But again, we're not using containers for this. We're actually, you know, building um, steel structures mo- that modules. look like containers. Yeah, modules. exactly. And also the outside can be brick. It can be whatever side we do steel, we do hardy board, it could be whatever siding you want. So, it so, so saying happen. you're using containers is really incorrect. What you're doing is you're just doing yeah. modular housing in the factory yes. using, <laughs> some, using some steel. Correct. And if you actually want to use containers and you let us know, and that would be more of a specialty project. Um, but we, but that, there's limits to containers in terms of ceiling height, um, in terms of width. Uh, sometimes to just cut a container, you know, uh, a doorway out takes us hours and hours, like a whole day. Really? So yeah, the labor is very labor intensive. Containers are very strong. Okay. Um, well, this is uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, have you got anything else that you want to show me? Yeah. Sure. Um, you know, there this is almost a. Uh, a resort type building that you were building up in Gravenhurst. Actually, what's interesting is we are doing um, some resorts. Yep. Um, I can actually show you, actually this one's probably good to show you because, um, you know, Calabogi is just near Ottawa. Okay. Um, sorry, it's just taking some time to load. Um, so, you know, this is what you're showing as, here now is 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 a two story yeah. uh, structure that you're saying is in a resort setting. Yeah, it's a ski resort that uh, runs all year, and uh, they have you know gorgeous um, uh, hills and uh, lots of amenities. Uh, so we're looking into building some two story chalets uh, for people to own or rent. Uh, you know, they'd be facing the ski hill come back have a hot chocolate hang out put your skis away and this would be probably a, you know i'm not familiar with ottawa but i believe it's around an hour outside of the city so can you give me any sense of how uh what the cost differential would be between this and build on site okay that is a difficult question to answer just because we do custom um so but, I would, but, argue, but you're saying it's cheaper and it's cheaper because of it, the in factory. It definitely more, is. And more I would, affordable. I can actually confidently say that, you know, you know, I've had some friends actually buy from us as well. And um, from them building custom in terms of conventional build, like stick build, uh, getting contractors, you know, all the time that you spend, you know, looking for that stuff and uh, versus what we do, I would say we can build for roughly half the price. Half the price on a yeah. per square foot basis. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Absolutely. That's great. Is Absolutely. there a website that uh, people should go to if they're interested? Absolutely. Uh, Bellcampmodular.com um, would, you know, check that out. We have uh, lots of information on there and our contact information is there as well. So they can contact us personally. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're a firm, but we're, we like to a personal touch to our work. So. And some nice uh, designs on the website. Absolutely. Yeah. There's lots of examples and I can send some personal examples if people want to contact me directly as well. Um, I'm at S Fong at, bellcampmodular.com and awesome. yeah really appreciate it and you also said you wanted to mention something about laneways so is this uh, a, a a potential of putting one of these things in the back of a house instead of a garage and and creating laneway housing like they've got in kitsilano yeah you know as you know brian um laneways are a hot topic right now i think in ottawa they call them coach houses and you know we call them granny flats um laneways are just part of the solution to more affordable housing. We actually do them. Uh, We've already installed one uh, in Toronto and Riverdale um, where we've installed another one next door 
we're looking at others. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition out there in terms of um, different types of builds. So a lot of conventional, um, some container, we do modular. So um, yeah, no, we're, we're really interested in that as because that really, you know, is connected to affordable housing as well. So yeah, we build anywhere. We build all across Canada. you have a picture Canada. of a, a laneway or a granny house you could show us? I might. <laughs> Sorry to, uh, to put these demands on you, but it looks no, really no. quite fascinating. I'm really, and I love the one of this house in Gravenhurst with all the windows. My gosh, I'd love to build that. I would say that, you know, we don't because, you know, we're so busy. I haven't been able to update the website too much. And also people are a little private sometimes. We always have to get permission. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, uh, this gentleman wanted a guest house. Um, he wanted it nice and small, though. So we didn't do like a two-story thing or anything uh, that extensive. But this was just sort of one module. We had to crane it over his house, which we were very excited to watch. Um, in fact, he brought his- Sort of like uh, bringing a bunk, uh, putting a bunkie into the back of the house via- Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. So he brought his kids out, they had hot chocolate and they had a really specific vision for this area. Uh, they're not renting it out. They're actually using it for a, a recreational space. So you got the, you know, the, 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 the air hockey, um, you know, I designed um, so I design everything as well in collaboration with the client. So there's a little dining area, kitchenette, you know, they can make some popcorn, have a movie night. Um, yeah. So that's their little retreat. So well, when the kids in this are... era of uh, COVID-19 <laughs> and everyone working from home, you yeah. should be putting little offices in people's backyards. Exactly. So actually one of the laneways we've done is someone's workplace now. So, you know, they're going to work from there while, their partners in the main house and the kids are in the main house. So she has a little privacy and a little oasis for her to actually get some pri uh, some quiet. Yeah. So you can do the guest house, you can do the kids recreation room, you can yep. do the man cave, you can do whatever you can do it is. That you, you can sh she shed. I heard that recently. She shed. A but she I think shed. That, uh, yeah. that your idea of, uh, if this is actually 50% of the cost, the affordability um, of, of building these uh, structures uh, is spectacular. And, and to come back to the principle, what it is, is you're saving money because you're building in a factory, um, yes. all, all uh, prefab, prefabricated effectively with um, the, the structure, the, the walls, the insulation, the floorboards, uh, the fixtures and the appliances, everything, uh, and then shipping it on site. And I've I've heard yeah. that um, you know a, a substantial amount of money um, when you're building on site is waste that you get away from. Plus, uh, just sort of bad weather days ends up uh, impacting you. Uh, so I can see that you've got a significant amount of savings. So I congratulate you and uh, look forward to uh, to your continued progress. Thank you. Um, honestly. It, it, it really is about time and time is money. So we feel like we're saving people's time. We're taking a personal approach and um, we, we just really want our clients to be happy and to realize that there are just unconventional and more um, forward thinking ways to build homes. Sunny Fung, if people want to come uh, to your website, can you remind us what that website is, please? Sure. If people want to come check us out, we're at bellcampmodular.com. Um, and uh, yeah, there's lots of information on there. Sunny Fung, uh, thank you so much for joining us and telling us about uh, modular housing by bellcampmodular.com. Appreciate it. Stay with us. We're going to have uh, uh, some more conversations about affordable housing in just a minute after these messages.